Hi one and all and uh, welcome to uh, Saga's Not Going Out Club and Write Time, Time to Write with me, Tony McHale. This is our third session of six. The idea being at the end of the six sessions you will be able to go off and write your own TV drama, your own radio drama, your own stage play, your own film or even your own novel. It's to give you a grounding to be able to go and do that. Uh, this, as I say, is the third session. If you missed the first two, briefly, the first session was about the idea. Might sound simple, but it's not. The idea is what starts you off. If you don't have a great idea, then you have nothing. We talked about putting that idea down as succinctly as possible into one or two sentences so you were keeping you focused on what that idea was. The second session was dealing with developing that idea further, making it grow, adding to it, so we're getting nearer and nearer to a whole story. That was the idea of the second session. At that second session, we dealt with log lines and tag lines. The idea being not that they are essential to the process, but they may help you focus. And with that in mind, I'm going to uh, answer the three log lines, sorry, three tag lines I gave you at the end of the last session. The three tag lines were three different movies, and I asked if you could decipher what the movie was. Okay, the first one was, they were seven, but they fought like 700. I'm guessing most of you got that, yeah. It was The Magnificent Seven. And the second one was, they're young, they're in love, and they kill people. I'm sure you're going to get that one as well, Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah, and the last one, which I think is probably the most difficult, uh, but let's see how you got on with it. Uh, you don't assign him murder cases, you just let him loose. And that was Dirty Harry the uh, rogue cop played by Clint Eastwood. Now, the reason I chose those titles to talk about the tagline was actually to give a link into session three here today. And th that link is that all those are great characters. Uh, the uh, Dirty Harry character, well, the piece just wouldn't exist without that fantastic characterization. It's what made the piece different from anything else at the time. Uh, they also, if you look at Bonnie and Clyde, that coupling was totally original and innovatory. We'd not seen anything quite like it when they were released onto the silver screen. And The Magnificent Seven, you've got seven very different characters leading the charge there. So it's great characterizations as well as great story that has made those films work the way they did. Uh, you've heard me say that story is God. Well, it is. Story is God. But if story is God, then characters are his support team. And that's what we're going to talk about creating today and how we go about creating new characters. So many years ago, I was commissioned to create a new spin-off show from BBC One's Casualty. They're very um, successful Saturday night hospital drama. Uh, they wanted this spin-off to go out and sort of Tuesdays or Thursdays or whenever. And, uh, and I said, OK, yeah, off I went. But I hadn't got a clue what I was going to write about. I didn't, I didn't know where to start. But after some thought, I decided that what I would do was make it set in a cardiac thoracic ward, in the heart ward. Because that way, uh, I felt we were dealing with the centre of the body, the heart. If your heart stops beating, then you stop living. And uh, it's also the heart of the emotional body, the emotional person. So it felt like a good mix for me at the time. While I was researching uh, this project, uh, I did a lot of research up at Papworth Hospital. And I met various people up there. But one of the people I met was this surgeon. And he was a, a heart surgeon with his team around him. And he was a terrific character. He was a terrific showman. 
it was almost like it wasn't a coincidence that operating theatres are called theatres. This guy was performing. I mean, he, not only did he perform and, and flourish and uh, do grand gestures, he would also uh, have music playing, classical music playing in the background uh, as he operated. And his team were devoted to him. So I thought that was the start of something really interesting. And then I remembered reading years and years before that, a long time before that, about another heart surgeon, a guy called Yagda Makub. Now, I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of him. He was a great pioneer in heart surgery in the UK. And I read this article in the Times many years prior, as I say, and it relayed his day's work. And during the day, he would just work and work and work. But also his team would work and work and work and work. They were totally dedicated to this man who was in turn dedicated to his work. He loved his work. He had a, 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 a passion for it so strong that came across on the page, which was so, so exciting to read. I would always thought if I could use that character anywhere, then I would. So what I did was take a bit of Yagdaman Kub, a bit of the uh, heart surgeon up in Papworth, sort of started to mould them together, added bits here and there. And the whole idea was we were creating a character that actually was totally dedicated to his work. Unlike most shows where you went and delved into their family background, into their relationships, whether they've been illicit or non-illicit relationships, but with Mayer, Anton Mayer, the character, we decided, or at least I decided, that we wouldn't, to begin with, look at any of that. All we would concentrate on was his work. And the two wonderful shining examples of that were these two doctors I'd already met. So I had the basis to create that character. And luckily enough, we had a great bit of casting on it, uh, an actor called George Irving, who I hadn't actually worked before. I, oh, actually, that's true, not true. I'd done Dangerfield, I think, with him before. But um, George came on board and he was terrific. It was, I mean, from our point of view, a stroke of luck getting such a great actor to play that role. But that's how that character was built, how it was made. But there are no rules about how you make characters, or at least I believe there are no rules on how you make characters. A lot of people believe there are a certain number of character types. There's only six or seven character types and everybody slots into one of these types, whether they be a hero or a romantic or a protagonist or an antagonist or a, a fool or a foil or whatever. Now, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that there are just types of characters and everybody slots into them. I think we're far more complex, far more interesting for a start, and far more fascinating to watch than just stereotypical types of traits of character. So I would always go against just looking for that type, looking for that trait, and go about creating original, exciting characters that the viewer and the reader want to stay with, want to go with, want to go on that journey with, and that's what's important. They, you need people that, that the viewer and the reader want to be with. And, and that's the way we create very exciting characters. If we were just going to do traits, it'd be all very simple. And I don't think people are that simple. If we all were that simple, we'd all be president of the United States or whatever. Anyway, how do we construct characters? Well, one of the reasons, one of the ways I always go about it and have done ever since I started writing was start to create a biography of a character, a detailed biography of a character, not just his or hers sex, size uh, or, or age, nothing as just as simple as that. What we need to look at is their background, who their parents were, who their siblings were. <coughs> Where did they go to school? Excuse me. Where did they go to school? Uh, where uh, where did they go to work? Or what do they like? Do they like music? And if so, what sort of music? Do they play an instrument? 
Do they like sport? And if so, what's their favourite sport? And do they have a favourite team? So on and so on. So you get all that minutiae of detail about a character that you are going to write about at a later stage. And it's really important that you get as much of that detail down as you possibly can. Of course, you're not going to use all that detail. It's never going to appear on a page or on a screen. But it is going to help you write that character and also write the situations that he, that character finds himself in. So that's what's important, is actually having that detail to make it easier for you to be able to write. If you know that character so well, then you will be able to handle any situation you put him in. Because you'll know why he's there, how he would react, what the dialogue is that comes out of his mouth. You'll know that man or woman so well that you'll be almost part of them, that you'll think of them. And you should be able to hear their voice in your head as they speak your lines or go about their, their uh, incidents, their plots that you have created for them. So that's what I would do. And uh, it's quite a, a laborious job, but in a way I found it very rewarding and quite exciting when you see this character coming together. Be very careful though. Don't be like a lot of actors. Um, if you're uh, an actor and you're creating your own character, then a lot of time actors create characters that they want to play themselves. And unfortunately those characters are normally heroic, wonderful people that can do no wrong. Uh, they're, they're the next thing to Superman. They even love their granny and they'll feed stray animals, everything. So just remember that those people don't really exist. We're looking at much more exciting characters. The other thing you mustn't do is like one autobiographer once did. He was writing his autobiography and to spice up the narrative, he decided to kill off the central character. Not a good idea. Joke. That's a joke. OK, so that's what we're going to do. Oh, that's what I want you to do is think about writing those characters. But before I leave you, I'm going to leave you with three little posing trivia questions about um, different characters. And the first one is a question about a character in a play. What's the name of the salesman in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman? What's the name of the salesman in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman? And the second one is, uh, what is the character, what's the name of the character that killed his friend Lenny Small? That's from a novel. The name of the character who killed his friend Lenny Small. That's the second one from a novel and the third one is from a film and see if you can recognize this character from this description. He is a jaded bar owner who wears a dour expression as he drinks and plays chess alone. He constantly proclaims his freedom from all bonds, but be they political or personal, but his love for a woman overcomes his cynicism and apathy to become a self-sacrificing idealist. Um, do you know who that is? I think you might do. I think it's a great description of what is a great character. And remember, those characters want to come alive. Uh, they want to be great for the actors to bring alive or for the reader uh, in a novel to actually get to grips with and understand who they are and what they are and how exciting they are. And as I said, that you want to spend time with this. Right, well, that's the end of this session. I hope it's been useful and I hope you join us again for the next session. Um, your assignment this week, should you wish to do it, uh, is to actually take the three characters, the three of major first major characters in your idea and write their biographies write their detailed biographies and see how you get on uh, the main thing about it is do enjoy it this is the slog period we're putting together the building bricks so that when you actually sit down and write your novel or write your script it's hopefully going to go with ease and there's going to be no writer's block 
So just think the more groundwork you do now, the easier the writing process is. Believe me. And before I go, remember three things. Write is right. Simple isn't easy. And there are no rules. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye.